that's what I'm well, on Coconut Road, um, yeah, we were looking at, the village was looking at maybe roundabouts because it seems like when London Bay builds out everything, it's going to be problematic and you can't really widen the road because the right of way is not available and be very expensive. So we were looking at the idea of the roundabouts. We we're trying to see if Benita would cost share with us, but, you know, that was politically maybe, maybe it will happen at some point. We don't know. Um, so we're trying to figure that out, but in the meantime, uh, Pelican, Pelican Landing Colony has got two more high rises that are just came, just were submitted to, being submitted to Benita. So now we're looking at that and trying to figure out the timing, you know, should we wait and see how are we going to face this? And I went to, I had a Zoom meeting with Benita because they've got the two, uh, the colony, then they've got the London Bay, Raptor Bay, and trying to figure out the timing and how long construction's gonna take and you know how to how to do this is gonna be problematic because you know the construction will be probably a couple of years, two, three years for some of these. So it's gonna take some coordination. <coughs> uh, the woman back there and then you Frank. Okay, thank um, you. Maybe this moves into the subject matter with a lot of building going on, but we used to have wonderful entertainment over at Coconut Point where the jellies and Hemingways. And it kept us safe, it kept us here, it kept us entertained, it kept revenue coming in. And really the only entertainment we have in this barrel is the Marlin Bar, Tommy Bahamas. <coughs> so I personally, if I wanted to do something tonight, I would have to travel downtown Fort Myers because it's, or, or Benita. So I'm just wondering, are we gonna get our entertainment back to keep us safe and to keep us local? Well, that, we, that's what we want. Uh, I know that Coconut Point had the problem. I know I worked at the county at the time when they had the opera singer, which I always tell the story, and the opera singer, somehow that music bounced across the road and the lake and everybody on Fountain Lakes called and saying it was horrible. We had to get the opera singer toned down and I think the opera singer eventually left. Um, who would think an opera singer would create that much controversy? So we, we tried to tone that down, but and then the, and then when the village first started, they were very strict about the alcohol consumption. They were very strict, but now we've kind of loosened up on that to where we can, you know, like if we've got alcohol at Paradise, why can't we have some entertainment? So Via Coconut that got approved has a little Main Street area, and they want to build some, uh, and they got approval for alcohol and bars. So we're looking at those things now. And, and, and Coconut Point, I don't know what Simon is doing because you know the retail business is so bad, but the entertainment is still very popular with people. So we're trying to encourage that. You know, we want to get we we think we do need more of that because nobody wants to drive downtown because it's right. it's a nightmare. Frank, mm -hmm. um, yes, sir. For, forgive me. This is not so much a question as it, as it is a, a statement. Um, it's perhaps 12 or 13 years ago, I was president of Apollo and Coconut Point at the time, and Hertz was uh, announced as a potential for acquiring that property, and I represented Apollo and the community, and uh, contacted Mary, who was at the, you know, with the county at the time, and worked beautifully to get together through through that process, as difficult as it as it was. So my statement really is is this, Jim. We are blessed having her here working for us, uh, and uh, thank you, Mary. I, I hope Mary can hang around. Can you hang around? You, I, yeah. Okay, yeah. great. She'll be here, so if you have any questions for her directly, you can get her at the end of the meeting. We, we have a time problem. Otherwise, to, uh, I've got to go back to work. So oh, oh right. Why don't you this fellow right there? <laughs> okay. You ready for me? <laughs> yeah, just, just just a second, Joe. Sure. Um, thank you, Frank. That was well done. I appreciate that. Everybody understands the kind of work that she does. Very fair, very thorough, uh, very credible in, in her uh, uh, chosen field. So I think you're right. We have a real blessing there. So let me, uh, let me introduce the next speaker, um, Joe Ryan. He's the Director of Ancillary Services for... Lee Health Coconut Point, he's currently serving, uh, he has been serving for Lee Health for quite some time, um, actually since 2010. He's responsible for operations of the Ancillary Services Department. I won't list them because there's about 20 of them here. 
So Joe's a very busy guy, and he's going to talk to us a little bit about what's going on in Lee Health, and he'll be able to answer as best he can whatever questions you have about Lee. Joe? <laughs> Thank you, Jim. You have a, yeah, you have a, I'll turn this. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thank you for having me. I think probably most of you know my my boss, who is Alex Greenwood. Uh, so he usually comes to these, but he's unavoidably out of town. So uh, he asked me to step in. So if you're you better, me. he's not coming back. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm going to do my best. Right? Okay. So I wanted to really quickly. I, I'm going to go over a lot of things. Um, and I think I'm going to answer probably some of the questions that you guys are already wondering about, already asking about. Um, so I guess hold, hold on tight because I might be getting to what your questions are. Um, so I'll do a very quick recap of what we have at Lee Health Coconut Point, and I think most of you probably already know this. Um, but this, this is what we have. So we've got the freestanding emergency room. By freestanding, what we mean is there's not a hospital attached to it. Um, so we've got 16 beds there. We have an uh, observation unit that is open. The observation unit was not open initially when we opened the building, and I'm gonna talk a little bit more about what that means later on in the presentation. Uh, we are doing surgery at Coconut Point. We have four operating rooms there plus two procedure rooms. Uh, the difference is there. Uh, the procedure rooms are for things like colonoscopies, endoscopies, uh, surgeries that don't require as high a level of anesthesia and aren't completely open, opening uh, the patient. So uh, those rooms are very busy. We are doing 400 plus surgeries a month now. We just did our 10,000th surgery um, earlier this year. Uh, we have physician practices on site, and there's a lot of moving parts to that, especially with Benita Health Center, which I will talk about also uh, later in this presentation. But as of today, these are the disciplines that are inside the Coconut Point building. It's primary care, peds, pediatrics, orthopedics, cardiology, pulmonary, and OB, GYN. Um, all of those are Lee Health physician groups. There are other private physician groups next door to us, which I'll talk about as well. Um, and then we have the ancillaries. Uh, the ancillaries is what I'm directly responsible for uh, operationally at the building, and I won't list them all, but you can see it's basically everything that supports the physician practices. Um, we have a lot of non-clinical services there too, uh, mainly through the Healthy Life Center, which is an access point. Um, for people looking for navigation. Um, we can schedule you through the Healthy Life Center. You can learn about what doctors are there. We have uh, education that happens. It's in-person and virtual. Uh, COVID actually grew that department. It didn't shrink it because they were not virtual before COVID. So now we're having hundreds of people attend these classes instead of 25 that are available to go in person. Um, one thing that I wanted to mention here, I'll, we get a lot of questions about the walking path. <coughs> that's, that's basically a function of the Healthy Life Center. We have walking paths all around Coconut Point, and there's a lake on the front side, uh, on the north side, that the walking path just stops and it doesn't go all the way around the lake. We, we have funding um, approved for that, but we had funding approved for that prior to this construction 